What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be diving on into the 1.0 of Keeper RL. We're covering it again because I think Keeper RL is one of the finest roguelikes that's on Steam. It's a really, really good game. Uh, this is a game that draws a lot of inspiration from Dungeon Keeper, but then turns it into a classic roguelike with permadeath where you build a base and when you die you have to start over. As far as I know, there is no saving or anything in this game, so this is not going to be for the faint of heart. It's very possible in this game to spend like hours building up a run and just get instantly smashed. So if you're the kind of person that finds that frustrating, not the game for you. Uh, this is the kind of game that's definitely for roguelike purists. We're going to dive on in because the developer was kind enough to fire on over the 1.0 for my perusal. And going through it, there's definitely been some new stuff that I've seen so far, even just playing for about 45 minutes. I have a lot of hours on this game prior to the release of this 1.0, so I'm especially amped for it. But let's dive on in. If after watching this, you wanted to get the game for yourself, you can absolutely do that. I got a link for you down below in the description. Like I always do, the game is almost done. This alpha is not available to everybody, so if you're expecting to play this alpha, this is just a special thing that the developer gave to me and a couple of other content creators. But it is coming soon after it gets done with testing. On top of that, on the day this video goes live, pretty strong chance I'll stream the game on Twitch TV. You can find that link down below in the description as well, just in case you wanted to participate in those festivities. Uh, the Discord, I ping it before I go live, so if you don't want to miss out, that's where you'll want to be. There are a number of factions that you can pick from in this game. They all play differently. Uh, you've got the Wizard and you've got the Warrior. These are the two original releases, and they play the most similarly. One is a caster. One is a melee guy, but at the end of the day, they kind of have the same unit setups, so on and so forth. They kind of do, like, similar stuff. This guy's mostly goblins, and from what I remember, this guy has, like, ogres and, like, orcs and stuff, but, like, they play kind of similarly from what I remember. You've also got humans, so you're not limited to just playing Dungeon Keeper with the bad guys. You can play Dungeon Keeper with the good guys, too. Uh, you can be humans. Uh, humans have kind of, like, angelic World of Warcraft style Tyrael units and stuff that they can summon. I guess that's Diablo too, but whatever. That's like angels and cherubim and paladins and stuff like that to fight back against the darkness. You've got the Necromancer. They've got a special mechanic that requires you to have a never-ending supply of bodies. And then also you can use bodies as a currency to kind of buy mods for all of your undeads, like adding extra arms and legs to them so they can carry more weapons or carry more armor, that kind of stuff. Basically creating undead abominations. You've got the gnomes. The gnomes are actually kind of similar to the necromancer. Kind of. Uh, gnomes are terrible and they can't fight worth shit, but at the end of the day, they build these giant battle mechs that are made out of different materials, and they use those battle mechs to conquer the map. Uh, you've got the dwarves. The dwarves are probably the hardest way to play the game. Uh, so the dwarves never get any immigration. You never get any more dwarves you start with 12 if they die they're gone for good but dwarves have like way better stats than pretty much every other race in the game so if you play carefully they shouldn't end up getting whacked deep down in a dungeon somewhere but dwarves probably require the most careful style of play there are also unannounced armies so i assume there's still more coming even after the 1.0 but for right now we'll play as the knight that's a nice easy accessible point for the game to start off uh, it gets you in the campaign mode. This didn't used to be a thing. They've added a new map to the game that allows you to pick a spot, and then you can fight against enemies. It looks like we have a Dark Elf tribe over here that's allied with us. Looks like we can fight ants. We can fight spiders. Okay, so it's probably a good idea then that we be out in the mountains somewhere. Like right maybe here on the edge. That seems like a good spot in my opinion. There's not, like, a whole lot of things for us to invade after we get done conquering this mountain pass. But it'll have to do. I'm willing to bet. Like, I'm tempted here because these two ant tribes are going to be really easy to conquer, and it's basically free research. The spiders shouldn't be that bad either. And so the main issues here are going to be this doxy priest and these knights down here. Those are going to be a problem. But mostly we should be okay. Let's go. So this is going to be kind of like a rather long-winded video, in my opinion. So I'm going to have to do a lot of editing. Uh, this is a game where, like, a lot of the content and a lot of the things that you can do are kind of, like, backloaded. There's a big runway at the beginning of this game where you're getting stuff set up where it takes you a little while to get to the meat of the action. 
But for right now, I'm going to take control of my Dungeon Keeper over here. And the one rule of this game is, if your Dungeon Keeper dies, it's game over. Uh, so this guy right here, at all costs, you want to keep him alive. Everybody else can die. Everybody else is replaceable. Unless you're playing dwarves, or unless that person is your keeper. Uh, so I wanted to look around the map for a minute, just kind of see what's here. And like, oh, there's bandits over here. Okay, let's go ahead and fall back then. We don't want to fight bandits yet. This one little guy's coming out to fight with us, so I'll kill him first. There we go. We'll kill him off first, and I am going to take that key, and I'm going to take that healing potion. Probably take the hand torch as well. But then we're going to get out of here because we don't want to deal with them just yet. But there's a bandit camp. That's a really good thing to know for our starting map. We'll exit control mode, which is totally fine because I've killed that guy. There's a pretty good chance they might attack us now. Uh, so anybody that you've kind of attracted the ire of has a chance of attacking you. But let's go ahead and blueprint out the start to our little base here. I'm going to have this run directly through the middle of all these goodies on this side. So there you go, just a big old long hallway. It looks like there's a watery pit right there. Question marks in this game? Question marks are events, things that happen when you open up that cavern, in case you were wondering. That right there is going to be the stone skull. And then the rest of them we haven't uncovered. There's also wheat growing right there. So I'm guessing there's a human village down here as well. So we actually have pretty good positioning to start conquering and killing stuff. But let's blueprint out this base first. Uh, so we'll kind of put you right there, and that'll be like a starting storeroom. We're a little bit close to the edge of the map on that side, so I don't want to go too nutty with verticality. But we can do something like that right there, I think. We'll clean up all these other resources that are in the area a little bit later. We'll add like maybe another room right there, and like another room right here. We'll just get like a nice little grid, I guess. Oh, never mind. We can't have a grid over there. I take it back. We'll just have one freestanding room. It looks like we got a particularly watery cavern here. So after our initial exploration, it looks like there is a river here that we're going to have to deal with. So we've got like an aquatic base, which is kind of fun. I don't think I've had an aquatic base in a long time in this game, so we'll give it a go. But let's set up some storage for our resources. And let's set up some storage for our equipment up here first and foremost. And then from there, these little guys are imps. They're effectively our workers. They're going to start gathering all the wood on the surface and all that kind of stuff. We also got a nice little supply of iron, and we got a nice little supply of, like, granite while we were coming through here as well, which should make life a little bit easier. But for the moment, what we actively need is we need to build... We can fill lava or water with stone. We do have a little bit, but, like, eh, probably easier to build bridges would be my estimate. So we'll get them started on the bridges. After installing our bridges, I went ahead and I also installed a bunch of lighting in here. Just because it makes the place a little bit prettier, makes it a little bit easier to track what's going on, and it's going to help out with the morale of my units. The other side thing we need to do is we just need to keep hollowing out the mountain here because we sort of ran out of space on this side. So we'll keep that running that way. It looks like the river kind of like juts to the right. So if we want to make effective use of this area, we're going to have to wait till it's kind of like over here. Now, this base is going to be a little tiny bit disjointed. That is, unless we kind of decide to be a little bit closer to the entrance, I guess. We could put like a little secret door right there and have this go this way. And in so doing, we could make a barracks on that side, I think. I normally like to have kind of like a big rounded out guard area right here, too. That tends to be sort of a thing that I'm into, is you have kind of like a large arena area right here at the front so that you can station patrols to kind of like protect this and they just walk back and forth inside this area. Like your biggest, toughest guy should be on that patrol uh, so that you've got like one team that deals with stuff that's happening in the interior base because sometimes attacks come from below and then sometimes they come from the outside and you want the big tough guys for the outside threats because the outside threats, those are the ones that'll bring it to you like the dragons and whatnot. Not too bad. I don't hate what we have going on here. So let's get the basics of our society put together. Now, no doubt you've noticed there's little icons that are falling over here on the left-hand side. These are recruits that want to move into our base. These are goblins that believe in our vision of a splatter cat drenched deleted humanity future 
And so, because they believe, we're going to reward them for that. The first thing we're going to need is a crafting workshop. That's going to be a big major thing that we need to have. And so, I am going to go to crafting workshops, and we're just going to put in a couple of basic workshops over here. Not a ton of them, just one or two. There we go, so that's enough. Uh, the other thing that we're probably going to want to get our hands on is that we actually have the benefit of having ironmongering as one of our opening stats. That's what the knight brings to the table, is that the knight starts out with iron crafting, which means we can make steel weaponry, which is good because normally at the beginning of the game you're using things like clubs and level arm or le you're using leather armor and clubs, whereas if you start out as the knight, you can go straight to like chainmail and you can go straight to like broadswords and you know spears and hooked blades and things like that that will make your early game warriors much more efficient in a fight. We also need these buildings because certain minions are going to expect these buildings to exist before they'll move in with us and be our super fun time roommate. The other thing we're going to need is we need like a sleeping area. And so we need to make kind of like a guard room basically where everybody will fit. And I think if we just do something, well maybe not that, do something like this right here. Just kind of like a little, you know, a little, little guard room doing its thing. Little guard room rattling along. There you go. And we'll put a couple more things right there. Uh, you are going to need light sources throughout the dungeon. Otherwise, people's morale is poor. Uh, we're going to use this right here as a library, I guess, where people can study once we get wizards and things. Uh, it looks like there's also kind of like a lone moose that's decided to... It says it's a deer, but that's definitely a moose graphic. Uh, but what we need now is we need training rooms. And what I like to do is I like to put my training rooms right at the entrance to my base. Uh, so that all of my guys that are training are right here already. So that I don't need to summon them. I don't need to set them up. I don't need to put in patrols or anything else. I can rest reasonably assured that there will always be somebody over here ready to defend the Citadel. Because the training dummies are over here and all of your warriors in this game They just train when they're off the clock. They don't do anything other than train and so they should all hang out in orbit in this area We've got recruits. Uh, what do we want to take? Well at the moment. There's actually nothing for us to take So I guess we'll wait for recruits, but trust me recruits are coming and like that, we've got the base set up, and as you can see, people are starting to train. Every single one of these units is capable of leveling up. They get stronger as the game goes along. Uh, you can actually check their stats at any time by just clicking on any unit. You can control any unit at any time and put the game into hack and slash roguelike mode. You can see their equipment over here. You can see their attack levels. You can see their defense levels and how good they are at using various crafting stations. If they have the ability to use that crafting station, they will use it. Uh, there's also gear customization through a system called Glyphs. Uh, so there's a lot of things you can do to like your favorite warriors in this game in order to like personalize them and make them pretty cool, especially once like consumables and magical items start to drop. On top of that, you will randomly get characters down here that have a little orange glow to them. The orange glow characters that are going to come up from time to time are characters that have a perk. A perk can be a flaw or it can be a good thing. Uh, so a flaw can be something like takes 10 extra damage every time they're hit. That's really bad. Uh, but there are also other perks that are like has wings. Which means that they can fly without using a levitation potion because drowning is actually a really big threat in this game. Or they can cross over lava with their wings without having to like have something that mitigates fire damage. Uh, you can find guys that are twice as fast as the normal guys. They're just extra speedy. Uh, you can find guys that burp, you know, and it ruins the morale of everybody that shares a room with them. So they've got to have like their own private room. Uh, you can see my character every now and again coming and beating the goblins. That's a thing that evil leaders do. They beat goblins in order to motivate them to craft more effectively. And we do have like a lot of crafting to get done, so I can sort of like empathize with that dude. Nobody likes to be on a schedule with a bunch of mooks that are just screwing the whole thing up. So after a little bit of selective recruiting, you know, we had to put out those advertising notices. We had to, I don't know what websites, we had to update our LinkedIn, be like, hey listen, we're looking for goblin war parties to come hang out and trash the land of the living. And so that's exactly what we have now. And we need to organize these guys into fight squads. So we'll go ahead and put these guys down on in here. In fact, I think we need him to be the first entry. Otherwise, there we go. 
That should work out fine. These guys right here will disband and then we'll control this group. And what you'll see is all my little goblins will fall in line. And from here on out, you're literally just playing a bog standard roguelike. You have spells, you can cast them, you fight with enemies in turn-based pros and combat. I'm guessing what happened on this map was, I think these guys right here killed all the humans. And so I'm thinking there's not going to be a human camp for us to clear, which is kind of a bummer. Uh, this game does have positional damage and whatnot, just like Dwarf Fortress or a game like that. You can cut off people's arms. You can cut off people's legs. You can do all kinds of violence. And there you go. We've wiped out our first tribe of bandits. They are also going to have a bunch of loot laying around. If you're very, very lucky, uh, you'll probably want to go through and grab those things because it'll make it a little bit easier to survive. But let's go investigate what happened to the humans down here. I'm guessing the bandits killed them because there is infighting between factions in this game. I'll go ahead and bash the door down real fast. Yeah, it looks like uh, they're all... I mean, I don't see any humans around. So I'm guessing they're all dead. Did one of my guys just die right there? Oh, they murdered a cow. I was going to say, was there like a trap on the door or something? What happened? Uh, let's go ahead and clear out the rest of the Fog of War, too, because I don't like having Fog of War on my home map. I like to be able to look around and see when and where enemies are coming from. And we should be solid on that front. Now, after you defeat an enemy, all you got to do is exit control mode, and it'll list everybody that you murdered. And then everybody will go back to kind of like their base building mode that they were doing previously. However, you're going to get these little tabs down here that say pillage. Uh, these down here will allow you to just have stuff teleported to your base, basically. Your little guys will go collect it uh, for later. I mostly just want the healing potions and the short bow. I don't really care about the clubs. The clubs don't really matter, in my opinion. Uh, were we playing as the Necromancer, we would also want to collect all the bodies, because the bodies are the currency by which we do all the gangster Necromancer stuff that we're normally going to be doing. But unfortunately, since we've killed everything on this map for right now, and we've only got, like, one level up under our belt, we've got to, we've got to be kind of, like, careful about what we want to unlock. So I think there's two obvious directions we can go in here. Uh, we can go with chicken breeding... That will allow us to increase our pop cap. Or we can go with sorcery. The sorcery will allow us to get wizards and priests that can heal our war party actively while we're fighting. That's a very, very helpful boon. However, since our pop cap is already full, I think our best way to go is we'll do chicken breeding. And then we'll probably try to wipe out one of the enemy's camps on a neighboring tile. Another option that you have is that this game is built on Z levels, in case you didn't know. And so what you can do with the Z levels is, uh, these are facing the wrong way, but whatever, it's fine. It'll do. Uh, we can put in stairs, and we can go down to the next layer down uh, in order to, like, beef with the enemy, basically, and find resources that we may not have had access to on this floor. Uh, there may also be enemy factions and stuff that exist on these Z levels. I highly recommend exploring them. These Z-Levels can be very, very dangerous for your faction because these guys can come up and attack your base from the interior while you're undefended. But for the first couple floors, I think we'll be all right. Extra melee training potential, 10 damage, 10 defense. He aggravates enemies. Ugh, can I fire somebody? Because he's actually pretty good. I can banish a guy, but it's going to hurt our morale. I'll just let it go. Like That's a really good recruit right there. I like him a lot. But... Um, unfortunately, we, I mean, a starting goblin that has like 30 attack and 30 defense is pretty insane. Like, that's a dude that ends up being kind of one of those dudes from like Shadows of Mordor. You know, what was his name? Bogak. Bogak. You know, there you go. Looks like there's gold on this lair, which is really, really good. There's some kind of gap right there, which concerns me. But each of these gold ores will allow us to recruit a lot more imps so that we can get some of these, like, civic digging problems done faster. But it looks like the gold is the only thing on this level. So we're probably going to want to go down another floor, too. We'll more than likely wait, I think. There's some decent resources on the next level down. A little bit of iron to help out our industry. A little bit of stone to help out our customization. A little bit of gold to help out with some other stuff. So on the two floors right here, we should be good. However, we kind of need to go out on the warpath as of right now. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. Let's go ahead and we'll grab our team over here on this side. 
that's not what I needed from you. Uh, we will control this team, and we're going to go out and see if we can get ourselves into some trouble. So here we are on the ant map. These ants, I think they have like an acidic bite. So we will want to be like a little bit careful. Oh, there's also kobolds here. Okay. Uh, we can capture and take prisoners. That is a thing that you can do. Uh, as evil factions, this is one of the few ways to get other factions to like fight for you, basically. Uh, but you can take people prisoner, and then you can like brainwash them and like beat them until they like serve you, basically. You're the bad guy in this game. What are you going to do? Uh, we'll wipe that guy out. If we can kill off these kobolds, that'd be great. Oh, yeah. Look at all the goodies that they've got over here, dude. Okay. The kobolds are down. Uh, I have wounded him. Well, I mean a little bit. I mean, my, my health meter's barely moved. But it looks like we got ourselves some free iron. And we got ourselves some free stone. So that's really, really good. Uh, that'll help out with gearing and getting these guys into a better situation. We do have dwarves over here. Dwarves may potentially be an issue. You can see some of my goblins are breaking off to go fight him. Well, I mean, he killed one. I guess we can get on in here. I, I don't know how I feel about fighting dwarves early. Yeah, they're capable of damaging me. Which means that they're capable of, like, critting me. And normally what that means is that, like... I So I, I take the safe approach in this game. For anybody that's ever played, like, hardcore WoW or, like, hardcore Diablo or anything else like that, really, the secret to playing a game like that is just to take it really, really slow. Uh, I do that with this game obsessively because dying sucks and it makes me sad. And so I don't want to restart over. And, in fact, you can see they touched me pretty good right there uh, before the fighting was over. I don't know if we lost a guy here, but we can go back to base now. And we should have also, I think, some more things that we can do. Uh, so we'll go back home real quick, and we will stop control mode. We wiped out a whole bunch of enemies, and so they're going to come back over here. We actually did not lose anybody in that fight. I'm very surprised by that. I thought for sure we lost somebody. Uh, let's go ahead and pillage. So we will take everything. We will take everything. We will take everything once again. They've got lots of good swords right there, too. We will take everything from the kobolds. And we will take everything from the kobolds. Perfect. And then over here, it looks like we've got one more research to do. I'm going to slap that into sorcery so that I can have healers in my party to make my life a little bit easier. The other thing that we're going to do is we need to dig another tunnel back over this way. And this tunnel is going to lead us to kind of like a big, I, I guess, animal husbandry area. A place where I'm going to raise my pigs and my chickens so that we can have lots and lots of moo moo meats and lots and lots of nuggies rolling around. Because, like, the ultimate goal of this has always been and will always be that we want to conquer the holy honey mustard farm. The humans have been operating that for a really long time and they've been keeping all of their dippins to themselves. And honestly, it's unacceptable. I want, as an evil overlord, I want honey mustard when I want honey mustard and it will be delivered to me. And so, since humanity has decided not to acquiesce to our requests, we're going to have to obliterate them. There's no way around it. Now, as our Dungeon Keeper gets stronger and we start exterminating the map, that word is going to spread. And so, we're going to start fielding attacks over here. Like, other factions are going to become aware of us. And they're going to start, like, probing and hitting us back with little scouting attacks. The same thing's going to happen if you attack an enemy faction and they survive the raid. And you lose all your guys, but, like, your keeper and one or two guys escape. Uh, they will come back and come after you in, like, revenge and whatnot. So, a lot of the strategy to this game is kind of figuring out, like, when to poke at the enemy. And when to kind of, like, let it go. You know what I mean? Uh, so, it looks like with chickens... We can raise our population by four. That means that like a, a four by four chicken coop is about the best we can do here. That's fine, but we'll get on top of it. Four more units would be great because that would allow me to pick up like two more warriors and two wizards. I think which would be really nice. So let's get our wooden bookcases in here real fast so that our wizards can start training. And so we'll drop in... A row of bookcases like so. We can't make, like, the better bookcases yet. 
but we will be able to at some point. Uh, but basically, wizards will come over here and they'll learn basic spells, things like light spells, things like magic missile, things like, you know, cure light wounds. Uh, things that will very much keep us alive, by the way. Uh, how are things going with, like, my gold down here? They're working on it, man. I just need to get to this gold so that I can buy more imps. Our labor is so slow at the moment. Now that we've got some space cleared out, I can actually get that chicken farm going. So let's chicken coop it up here. It looks like a 4x4 four four is about the best we can do. Because that should give us our plus 4 to population. We can also beautify it a little bit, I guess. Like, we could put in like a little, you know... Like a little chicken coop fence over here, dude. Show that we have some standards. Can't really see the footprint very well because it's dark in here, but maybe it'll be awesome. It's hard to say. Let's go ahead and put in some torches, too, because chickens like light, right? Chickens prefer to be in the light. I guess you have to put in the fences. I didn't even realize. So there's all of our chickens right there. Our chickens have moved along, and I think that's pretty much the pop cap boost that we can get from chickens. I like how the chickens, they have the flight attribute, so they just naturally levitate, but, like, their little wings and everything don't flap or whatever. Like, they've got the... They've got the the flight attribute, which just makes their little sprite hover around like effortlessly like they're the Doctor Strange version of a chicken. <laughs> it's kind of fun. One detail I did notice is they equip weapons now. Last time I played the game, the sprites didn't change based on what they have equipped. This time they do. So that's a nice little change. No clue how far along they are with tracking down this gold. Uh, it looks like they actually made it. It looks like they grabbed it. I don't know how much gold is going to be in these piles, but I swear to God, dude, if I can just get, like, two more imps, my life will be so much easier. How much is in a gold pile in this game? Like, five? Oh, 19! Yeah, we should be able to get a whole bunch of new friends then. In fact, you can see them right there. Give me, give me two more imps real fast with that money, and if I can get two more imps after them, I will be a very happy camper. And I think the math adds up. Now we're probably going to want to pick up a wizard. Five damage when drunk. All right, well, give me a wizard because wizards are very, very helpful. They can cast flight and stuff on our units so that we can cross water easier. And we are going to need another warrior as well. And then I'll probably save my next two recruits for priests so that we have people that can heal. And what you'll see is he'll come over here and he will start training on this side and he will learn different spells so like for right now he's got air blast so he can push the enemy back but as he trains more he should get more spells i've decided to start manufacturing iron armor as well because we're starting to get down in z levels and i've got these guys now plugging along trying to get to their destination they should just mine this out over the course of the next hour or so i suppose Hey, it probably won't be an hour. I've got it on ultra fast speed. It'll probably be 10 or 15 minutes till they get it done, though. Probably not inside the purview of this video. But honestly, I've been editing like crazy. So I've probably got like 20 minutes of footage now after having played for like an hour. So like, this is a pretty edited video for me as well. There's going to be a lot of big time skips and whatnot. I need another ooh, extra spell training potential. That's what I like to hear. So our war party is all nice and set up. Uh, with these wizards right here, they're done training. That means that they have received a magic missile spell. They've got a flight spell, or they will teleport you to a safer location or themselves. They've got air blast. They're okay. These guys are kind of useless until they hit level 3 training uh, because most of their spells are just kind of support spells, which you wouldn't expect from a wizard. You expect more like lightning, fireballs, melting people's faces off, that kind of stuff. Uh, no. Uh, with our wi with our healers, we definitely want them to train a little bit too, because while they're training, they're going to upgrade their healing spell quite a bit, and we want that healing spell to be there, otherwise you're going to have a bad time. Good. So that's kind of what I was waiting for, is that poison is kind of like the silent killer in this game, so you definitely want all of your priests to be level 3, that way they can get rid of poisoning. Otherwise, what you're going to notice happens is your guys will get bit by a weak enemy like an ant. And it's not going to do any damage, but then they're going to like spontaneously die like 30 turns later. That's because their health starts slowly ticking down from the poison bite. And so you really, really, really want to have your priests ready to go uh, with the ability to heal poison about as soon as possible. But it's time for our war party to head back out on the road and make some murder. 
Uh, we were still working on this little ant area, as I recall. So we'll come back to the little ant area, and let's see if we can find the entrance to their hive over here. Hopefully we do. You got an entrance to your hive over here. It's got to be that question mark right there. There may be other layers and stuff in here, though, too. Like, always explore the maps, because sometimes you'll find, yeah, exactly, like little nooks like, ooh, what's going on in here? Oh, cool, ants. Okay, I guess the ants just have, like, a whole bunch of loot laying around. Fair. Yeah, get that magic missile off. Let's have the boys pull into the room. Uh, Ant Queen just smote the hell out of one of my goblins. So that kind of suck it. Uh, we did lose one guy right there before the heal could even go off. And then with these ants over here, I think I'm good. Like, now that we've killed the queen, we should be all right. It looks like what happened here is that the ants, looking at the layout, it looks like they killed a dwarf fort. So the ants moved in and killed all the dwarves because this is definitely like a dwarf layout right here. And I love the little immersive things like that in this game where they don't just give you an ant hive. You know what I mean? Like, you don't just go to an ant hive and it looks like an ant hive or whatever else. Like, in this game, the factions are liquid. Like, they do things in their generation that sort of gives you a little bit of, I guess, emergent detail that makes the world more interesting. You know, something like these ants didn't just create their own ant hive. They actually conquered some dwarves over here before we arrived. And we don't exactly know what the time period was that that happened in. But, like, at the end of the day, used to be a dwarf hold. Now it's a giant mass grave full of ants. And I kind of, like, dig that. Yeah, there's dwarf, there's dwarf corpses all over the place. The chest is apparently full of rats. Yeah, dwarves think it's hilarious to booby trap. They booby trap their their crates with a whole bunch of rats inside of them. They find that to be unbearably funny. Dwarf humor, man. It is what it is. Uh, it looks like there's another thing we can conquer on this map too, and I strongly suggest that we do so. Oh, it's just bandits. Good. Okay, I can solo them, dude. I'm a death knight. Like I'm not worried about them. I'll solo the hell out of these dudes. The boss is the only one capable of doing any real damage, so who cares? There you go. Tribe of Bandits is down. Uh, we also get all of their loot. Was there anything else on this map? I know it seems really easy right now, but I promise it's not. Once you start getting to, like, the more complicated enemies that shoot, like, cones of fire that kill, like, five of your guys at once, oh, apparently we captured a rat. I don't know why we captured a rat, but apparently we captured a rat. We got ourselves a rat. We gotta kill the rat. All right, so we caught ourselves a rat, uh, but did we? We did indeed get a level, so we can learn something new here. I would probably recommend. I don't know, actually. Archery is a good idea. Ranged units in this game are pretty strong. I don't hate them. Uh, who did we lose? We lost two warriors. Okay. This guy has extra melee training potential, though, which just makes him, like, god tier. We're going to loot everything inside the, the ant hold. And we're going to loot everything inside of there as well. And you should see it all get added on into kind of like our, our overall stocks over here. Does the keeper still have that healing potion on him? He should definitely have that healing potion on him. He has a healing spell. But I don't see him rocking the healing potion in his pocket right now. Oh, good. He learned some spells, too. Yeah, he's kind of like an evil paladin, so he can learn some limited spells, too. And as he levels up, his appearance changes as well, kind of like Gauntlet Legends style. So when he hit, when he hits certain levels, like I think it's like 5 or 10, he'll get like a little helmet. And then when he gets up higher, he gets like armor. And then when he gets up higher, he has like even heavier kind of pauldrons and plate mail and starts looking like a real big bad. But the Skeeper RL. This is a great game. It's a really fantastic game. I'm very excited to be able to welcome it into its 1.0. It's one of those forever games that's been worked on for a really long time, so I hope you guys will enjoy it like I have enjoyed it. Uh, I think it's totally worth your time. I don't really have any complaints about it. If you're okay with the roguelike contingency that like you can die and, and you have to start over from scratch even though you've spent the last five or six hours building a base, this game has early game, it has mid game, it has end game, it has strategy, it has meta. It has interesting things going on uh, that lead me to recommend it wholeheartedly. 
I will see you all next time. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. Today was Keeper RL. Tomorrow it's be something else. Take care, everybody. That's all I got for you.